there was a lot of things in my mind to potentially talk to this group about, but I, I, I figured uh, in the end, I might as well do the most obvious thing and talk a bit about consciousness of, of AI systems, since that, that's sort of what uh, differentiates my expertise and background the most from uh, most most of the folks in this group. I'm sure there's a few other other AI folks in, in here also. I mean, I'm interested in consciousness from a great variety of perspectives and in interested in paranormal phenomena and survival and other more, more marginalized aspects of consciousness as well as neuroscience of consciousness and its connection with quantum theory and a, a whole bunch of things. But my professional career has been largely focused on artificial intelligence, followed by the original background in, in mathematics. And the connection of consciousness and AI, you know, it's something that's been confusing and the subject of a great amount of uh, debate in the AI community since the middle of the last century. And it's something that now is assuming greater and greater uh, relevance to the practical world as AI systems of various sorts are you know, doing more and more things and grabbing the headlines, not just because of the concepts of what they may do in the future, but because of the AI systems that you can go online and use right now that are doing more and more things that previously were considered the province only of, of humanity. And I mean, it's not, it's not just playing games or predicting markets anymore. It's, uh, you know, creating art or writing poetry or singing. I mean, a AI is, is invading or pervading those areas of human pursuit that seem to involve, uh, you know, more personal creativity or even a spiritual dimension when people do them. And AI is doing these things in quite different ways. And uh, as many of you would know, I'm fairly convinced that Ray Kurzweil and others are right, that we're approaching a technological singularity in, in, in that within the next couple decades, we're going to see AIs with tremendously greater general intelligence and practical capability than, than human beings. And if that's indeed the case, and more and more people think that's not totally batshit crazy anymore, seeing what chat GPT and, you know, various AI systems out, out, out there can do. I mean, I, I've felt this way since the 70s when I first learned what AI was when I was a little kid, but, but it was a marginalized perspective. Even when Ray Kurzweil wrote his books, you know, Age of Spiritual Machines and The Singularity is Near, it was a little bit of a out there perspective. I think now more and more people are starting to think, hmm, well, wait a minute, AI is doing more and more and more stuff. None of us could imagine it would, it would do. Maybe these crazy people foreseeing it will exceed human practical intelligent capability are right, right? So that's about intelligence, an increase of intelligence and practical capability. But what does it mean about, what does it mean about consciousness, right? I mean, that, that's uh, less clear, I would say. And one possibility, of course, is that all the AGI systems we're building are non-conscious sort of philosophical zombie type automata. And Conscious sentience and sapience is going to wipe itself out in, in favor of non-sentient imitations of, 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 of itself. Like the, the real experiencing minds are going to create zombies and then wipe, wipe themselves out and zombify the universe, right? And, I mean, another possibility, of course, is that the machines we are engineering do have their own forms of conscious experience and which may be more intense, broader, and deeper in some ways than human conscious experience. And then the singularity will not just be an e explosion of technological potentials and new machines and new gadgets and new ways of transforming matter, but it could be an explosion of 
consciousness and lead to a new proliferation of of so many different uh, types of consciousness that humans now couldn't even imagine what they are. So I see someone asked what this singularity means. So in, in this context, when Ray Kurzweil and before him, Werner Vinge, the science fiction writer, proposed the concept of a technological singularity, what, what they meant essentially was a point at which scientific and technological advance occurs so fast it appeared to be infinite to the human mind. So say, say, you know, an app on your phone is making one Nobel Prize level discovery every five seconds. So that, that's progress so fast. It, it seems seems like it's infinite. It may not may not really get infinite given the, the constraints of physical law. Not that physical laws are, are really laws anyway. They're just our, our current current best un understanding. But the the sort of there's many technologies associated with this. I mean, there's nanotechnology and building molecular assemblers. There's technologies for curing death and disease and enabling human immortality, brain-computer interfacing. I say AI is in a way the quintessential singularity technology, which goes back to the quote from I.J. Good in 1965, another mathematician who said the first truly intelligent machine will be the the last invention humanity needs to make, right? And uh, I mean, that, that's really why AI is essential here, because if you did get an AI with greater general intelligence of people, I mean, it's going to keep making more and more inventions, including inventing better AIs, right? But then how this relates to machine consciousness is what I want to focus on for the, for the rest of my time here, which is something that's sort of, A, not discussed much in the in the whole AGI singularity circle and the vast majority of people concerned with creating AGI or working to a technological singularity take what I think of as a very naive sort of materialist reductionist perspective on consciousness which I don't really share so what what, what I want to do is sort of outline how someone who doesn't take a reductionist or materialist view of consciousness views AI today and and the potential of AI that that is greater in intelligence scope and capability than than, than human intelligence so I'm a let me start by talking about the mind here. So I've got, say, 15 minutes to explain life, the universe, and everything. That, that, that If I talk really fast, maybe, maybe maybe I can do it. Yeah. What 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 is mind, right? So we're we're accustomed in AI to take a very functionalist view of mind, similar to what most neuroscientists take. And you're sort of looking at at the mind as patterns of organization that can be observed in the dynamics of a brain and in an AI that would be patterns of organization that could be observed in the dynamics of, of, a, of a computer program. And I think that's a very useful way to look at it. I think you could take a slightly broader perspective and look at the mind as a set of patterns, patterns of organization that are associated with a certain brain or a certain computer system. And I wouldn't say all minds in the whole universe need to be associated with a with a with a body or a brain or a computer system. There could be disembodied minds floating out there in, in the astral sphere. But for the present purposes, I'm more concerned with the minds associated with the human brains or with or with computer with computer programs. Those are those are hard enough to figure out. And I don't rule out that an individual human mind could have some aspects that are not sort of immediately observable by recognizing patterns in, in the brain associated with that, with that human mind. So, I mean, to me, first of all, panpsychism is sort of table stakes to me. Like, I, I, I consider it the only coherent perspective on consciousness is to say, like, this coffee cup has, has its own 
sort of consciousness, lacking many of the characters that the human brain or an advanced AI system might, might have. But my my whole my whole approach here starts from the perspective that you know everything to some extent is partaking in a universal consciousness field, and I think consciousness probably is more fundamental than than space or or or, or time even. And but. Starting from that perspective, you still have the question, does the mind of a human or a computer system comprise solely of sort of organizational patterns that can be detected by looking at the dynamics within that system? Or could there be other patterns that are sort of associated with that system, but not just regularities of dynamics in that system? And you, I mean, in the literature on psi phenomena, you can find people talking about the antenna theory of, of human consciousness, right? Well, the brain, the brain doesn't have the mind, the brain doesn't even have the mind in it. The brain is an antenna that receives mind waves coming from somewhere else. And that 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 metaphor clearly isn't quite right either, because I mean we can we can look in the brain and we I mean we can we can see now with brain imaging, we can see how computer we can see how machine oh sorry I, I can't tell people from machines anymore we can we, we can see how the neurodynamics of of vision is forming a percept of what's seen I mean you, you can see how actions are formed in the premotor premotor cortex and other parts of the cortex I mean we can see an awful lot of thinking perceiving and acting and feeling corresponding to dynamics in the brain so the brain is certainly not like a simple antenna that's just receiving on the other hand the fact that a bunch of the patterns associated with an individual mind are observable by pattern analysis on what happens in the brain doesn't imply that that all aspects are right and if you look at if you look at sort of out there hypotheses like rupert Sheldrake's uh, morphic resonance hypothesis. I mean that that gives one sort of hypothesis by which there could be many cognitive patterns observable in the dynamics of a of a human brain or a computer system. But these can be resonating in a way with with other patterns elsewhere in in the universe that are that are not just patterns in in the physical dynamics of that of that system. And so then. Then you you have a sort of mix of the traditional like functionalist patterns of organization observable in a physical system and other mind patterns that are associated with that system and exist not in that physical system in a, in a narrow sense, right? And the, I mean, if you look at if you look at all the data on reincarnation and mediumistic seances and life after death and all, all this, I mean. I totally don't believe the mythological stories of of any of the traditional religions. I mean, there's elements of truth in there to be sure, but the, on the other hand, the core phenomenon pretty clearly is real and pretty clearly implies that our individual minds, not just some universal mind, but our individual minds have some sort of reality not associated with the with the not necessarily spatio temporally located with the individual body. But associated in, in, in some broader way, and th this this is obviously something our current science doesn't deal with very well. And so when when people say this proves that AIs can't be conscious like people, it confuses me because it feels to me like if if a human brain, which is a bunch of meat, can have this connection with mind patterns that are not just patterns of organization in that brain as a physical system then why could a computer program, which is a bunch of wires and resistors and switches, like why could that not have an additional sort of not traditionally physical aspect of its mind as well, which is which is which is resonating with the patterns in, in, in that in that computer system. There's at least no obvious reason why this this bunch of meat can resonate with an extra physical aspect of mind, whereas a bunch of silicon can't resonate with some ex extra physical as aspect of mind, right? And so this this is a, it's just something that we don't have a strong scientific basis to to reason about now, which is uh, is 
problematic, right? Because we're, we're, we're going about building machines that may be much smarter than people. And we, we really don't have a way to think about what will their experience be, nor, nor what, will, what will the relation of their increasing intelligence be to the whole nature of, of mind, mind and reality and, and our universe, right? So you, you take a crazy hypothesis like Terence McKenna's idea that superhuman AIs post-singularity collaborating with the uh, aliens that he met while on DMT retrocausally went back in time to implant ideas about how to build a benevolent singularity in, in, in our minds, right? Now, this, this sounds crazy from a consensus point of view. On the other hand, we understand a little enough about both fundamental physics and the fundamental nature of consciousness. We certainly can't we can't rule out a hypothesis like that, right? And I think, uh, you know, doing doing more and more science to understand how consciousness works and how paranormal phenomena work and what the experience of a machine is, do, do, doing experiments like wiring our brains into the brains of, of AI systems to sort of understand what kind of shared experience can be gotten in the way. A lot of these things can be done are very important and interesting. On the other hand, the capability of AI is advancing faster than this sort of exploratory work could be could be done, right? So I want to run through a few of the interesting questions and issues that, that are, are aroused here in the limited time I, I, I have left. So if you if you assume that consciousness is imminent in everything and that it may have physical and transphysical aspects i mean you then have a lot of open questions right you have a lot more open questions than arise in a standard materialist and reductionist point of view so i mean you can you say okay well this agi system that we're going to build okay it's conscious but is it conscious in a similar sense to humans i mean it could be less conscious it could be it could be more intensely conscious and what's the right rating scale is not is not too obvious right i mean current narrow ai systems like a chat gpt or dali don't really understand too much they don't cognize too much they don't have a sort of global workspace or a theater of consciousness like people do so you would say these do have some sort of conscious associate with them, just like my fingertip or, or a coffee cup does, but it's very different than the sort of reflective consciousness that, that, that a person has. But what if you build a system with a cognitive architecture more closely resembling the cognitive architecture of, of people? What if you build an a AGI system, which is an, an agent, you know, pursuing its own goals in the world and which is an open-ended intelligent agent, which is engaged in sort of maintaining its own boundaries as a system and in seeking to transcend itself and grow beyond itself while still maintaining a sense of identity and self-continuity if you build an ai system which is an embodied reflective individuating you know self-transforming agent in the same sense that that a human being is what's then the conscious experience of, of this of this ai system right and is that in fact similar to the conscious experience that a human has? Now, some people think the conscious experience of humans is tied to quantum mechanics. So this open-ended AGI agent would only have a human-like conscious experience if it was implemented on a quantum computer, or a quantum gravity supercomputer or something. It's 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 possible. On the other hand, if you if you if you look at a whole bunch of work by Dirk Ayertz, Leon Gabor, and a whole bunch of others, there's an argument that quantumness is really about the relation between the system and the and the observer rather than about leveraging specific physical phenomena so that if you had a sufficiently complicated ai system implemented in, in in a classical computer then from the perspective of a human observer the best way to model that system might be using quantum observables so it could it could be there's a quantum algebra aspect to consciousness and complex cognitive systems even if they're implemented on what we think of as complex classical computers. So there's there's a lot of subtlety here, a lot of things, a lot of things that we that we don't understand. And AI ethics ties in here as well, right? Because a lot of a lot of our consciousness is not just individual. I mean, we have first person, second person, third person consciousness, and 
our connection with other people is so much of what what makes us human and this is tied in with the limited but considerable capability that people have for for empathy and and compassion if you had an ai that couldn't connect with other people and have an i thou experience and and really lose itself in the experience of empathy and compassion with others i mean then this then this agi's consciousness would not resemble human consciousness too much right but but uh on the other hand there's no reason to assume that just there's no reason to assume an agi system couldn't be far more compassionate than than most human beings in fact an agi system theoretically could build an in-depth simulation of any other person or ai that it that it interacted with far, far better than, than than people could and could probe that simulation and and, and learn more about the other minds it was interacting with so as to become much more empathic than, than than people could be two agis can swap mind stuff with with each other very flexibly more so than people can so i think i think you know we're looking at humans which is one sort of system agis is, is a broad variety of possible types of systems and th this includes some that are classical some that are quantum it includes some that are heavily oriented toward modeling understanding and empathizing with 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 others as well as potentially some that are very narrowly self-focused at achieving achieving their own goals and this this comes back to the the title i gave to this talk which is the the coming consciousness explosion so my my own belief is that what we're thinking of as a technological singularity it's not just an explosion of complex you know highly functional gadgets that can do more and more stuff and manipulating matter it's going to be incredible proliferation of of different kinds of consciousness and experience you know some of which will be will be gotten by people jack, jacking a machinery classical and quantum and sorts in, in, into their brains some of which will be purely agi systems of of you know classical silicon type of of quantum wetware and and, and various different sorts and you'll have networks of different minds together from what I call a, a, a mind plex, a sort of group mind which has more unity than a current society, but less unity than, than an individual human mind. I mean, you can, you can, I mean, imagine a mind with a sensorium, which is all the cameras and microphones on the planet Earth, and then extending in, 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 into space, right? What's, what's the conscious experience of this, of this sort of, 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 of system? I think the potential is, is is tremendous and so to to my mind i mean humanity is on the verge of creating these machines that can build new machines that can build new machines that can build new machines and you could just as well say human consciousness through its self-understanding and understanding of the world limited though it may be but still very powerful we're on the verge of creating new forms of consciousness, which can then create new forms of consciousness at an exponential rate with an amazing proliferation. Now, to an extent, you know, that's great. You could you could view that as humanity's purpose to create these new forms of intelligence and consciousness that that, that will just proliferate and 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 do the do their thing. To the extent we're we're concerned about the well-being of humans and traditional humans stuck in these bodies to some extent as as this singularity unfolds it then becomes important to think about sort of the ethical nature of the the first transhuman consciousnesses we create and how much of these are sort of empathically resonating with leg legacy legacy human consciousnesses right and this this leads us into stuff I've talked about a lot more, which you can you can find if you Google other other talks I've given. Look them up on on, on YouTube. I mean, I think the the path the AI industry is taking now with big tech companies and big tech companies and and big governments, you know, building reinforcement learning driven AIs that are optimizing quant you know quantitative metrics aimed at ensuring the domination of one nation over others or or the domination of one company over competitors. I think creating these narrow AIs that are serving narrow goals of companies and governments probably is not the way to make the first generation of transhuman artificial consciousnesses 
compassionate and, and ethical and sort of wel welcoming human consciousness with with kindness and, and patience into the post consciousness explosion sphere and I think that there's more promise in sort of open source, decentralized, democratic, collaborative networks. So, I mean, you want to see the first AGI come about in a way that's more like the internet or Linux than like, say, App Apple or the mobile phone ecosystem, right? And I mean, there, there's some hope because we do, humanity does do some things in open, democratic and, and inclu inclusive way, but we certainly we certainly don't do do everything that way right and i think one of the one of the challenges we have as we move toward technological singularity and as we create smarter and smarter machines i mean a we have the challenge and we don't really understand that much about how intelligence works or how consciousness works and so our capacity to build is exceeding is exceeding our, our understanding so far and of course another another thing in our way is that the common approximate understandings that are most pervasive in the world are largely misunderstandings even more than, than they need to be, right? I mean, you, humans, we have limits to what we can understand, but we do understand already that reductionist materialism is, is wrong, yet almost everyone working on AI is coming at it from a very narrow reductionist materialist point of view, right? So our, our, our fundamental ignorance is one obstacle, and... The, the, the fact that we have a sort of culturally enforced level of ignorance, even stronger than our fundamental ignorance, is, 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 is an even bigger obstacle. And, and, and that's, uh, that's sort of what we're fighting against, along with the more obvious, uh, you know, political and economic obstacles of government and big corporate ownership of, 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 of technologies. But on the plus side, we've got congregations like this of amazing... Uh, open-minded brilliant people like thinking together about about difficult and, and important issues which is the sort of thing that 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 gives some hope that humanity may be able to navigate some moderately continuous path of its own consciousness into the space of broader consciousnesses that that we're we're opening up with that with technology development and you know i i i understand in a certain sense there's probably superhuman consciousnesses already out there and the evolution along our specific timeline is not the be all and end all there's there's other stuff in the brother universe that's independent of the timeline of of, of development that humanity is, is going through from a consensus reality view anyway but but still wouldn't wouldn't it be nice to make things come out as warm friendly and loving as possible along this timeline that we're currently uh, believing ourselves to cruise along. I mean, why not? It's better than the alternatives. <laughs>